Welcome to Friday Market Updates. My name is Jill Bester. I am an Associate Portfolio Manager with Genis, and today we are joined by our Chief Investment Officer and CEO, Wayne Wichel. Hi. Good afternoon, Wayne. How are you today? Great, great. Good to be here. Great, great. Well, it's been an interesting week. Why don't we start what we've seen in the markets? Well, there was some good news this week and some bad news. Uh, but generally, I think it's good, good overall. The good news was that the UK and US uh, vaccines, are, they expected to finish their vaccines by uh, July, August area. And one of the Wall Street brokers came out this morning and said they anticipate herd immunity in the US in 40 to 70 days. So, those, so good news on that front in terms of the vaccine front. Uh, on the flip side, we had extreme cold weather. You all heard about in Texas. Amazing, amazingly cold for that. It even had snow in Galveston. And uh, in that, that made oil pop. And uh, also with the good news in vaccine, interest rates went up quite dramatically. The 10 year yield in the US is uh, like 134, 135 as we speak kind of thing right now. So it's rates went up anticipating stronger economic growth and that helped financials and energy also with the, with the Texas situation. Right. Um, with the Texas situation in regards to the energy, there's looking that there might be an increase in inflation uh, due to the energy prices. What are your thoughts? I think this is more of a one-time push, you know, the, the cold weather kind of thing. I think as we go through this year here, as the global economy improves, uh, there'll be more demand for oil, obviously, and that'll push energy and inflation up, I think, at that point in time. But this one-time cold event, it'll, it'll pass. The bigger issue is what happens to the course of this year, right? Right, right. Um, we spoke about rates here. Obviously, bond yields continue their charge. Um, what does this mean for our portfolios? Well, it's, I think, a good thing for our portfolios in that uh, we have shorter interest rate bonds, short duration bonds, and we have more economic sensitive names in our portfolio. And that's higher rates means higher yield curve means stronger growth down the road. Um, also helps financials, we're all waiting financials. So those are good things from that perspective. So it's just going to help the, I think, the economic sensitive stocks move and some of the value stocks move as well. Great. Um, Yellen obviously came out yesterday in support of the stimulus package. Um, what do you think would actually take for the Senate to actually get this deal done? Well, I think they're close. And I think uh, the Biden administration have hold more of the cards. Um, I think some of the more centrist senators will have some say like Joe Biden. Uh, I think they will probably will end up taking out the minimum wage. Uh, it's not very timely right now, just in terms of it probably would impact. They, there was an independent study by the CBO and in, in, in the in the U.S. government, and they were they they saw like a million and a half jobs lost. So it's not a good time for it, given that hospital, I mean, that hotels and and restaurants are being squeezed right now. Uh, there might be some trade off on that, and maybe a, a cut here and there. I'd say, but it's. Uh, I think it's close, but it needs a, just a few more modifications. Right. Biden obviously has talked a lot about infrastructure and infrastructure, you know, takes us back to what's happened in Texas. So perhaps with the stimulus, we'll get some infrastructure improvements in the states as well, which would be great. Um, one of our questions came in from our client, uh, how long term interest rates have risen and uh, but GICs have not moved and, and, and what would create that event? Well, long-term rates are driven more by the market and longer-term inflation expectations. Short-term rates are controlled by the central bank. And uh, Powell, the head of the Fed, has said they're going to keep rates low for a long time. They want to see inflation above 2%, 3%, maybe even 4%. They also want to see un the unemployment rate back down below 4%. So they're going to keep that rate low as long as they can. And let uh, they're going to redline the inflation in, in, in order to get more jobs. Because getting those jobs really is an issue now in terms of equality across uh, different different income levels. And, and when the unemployment rate drops below 4%, that really has an impact on income growth in the lower uh, income demographics. Right. It was interesting yesterday, Walmart announced that they would increase the minimum wage or average wage for their employees to $15 in the States and, and their, their shares dropped on that news. So it's interesting to see the impact on the company bottom line, like you said, um, moving forward with that. Well, I think the bigger companies that have digital services and home delivery and a global foot, a national footprint can do that. But if you're in, in a small town in Mississippi or Oklahoma, 
you don't have that kind of luxury. So it's it, it depends. And also a lot of restaurants, uh, restaurant workers, their incomes are driven by by tips and that might mitigate that as well. So there's 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 issues here. They have to study it better, I think, before they do something. Right. It was interesting to watch the House uh, Committee on Financial Services in the States yesterday bring to task the Reddit and uh, Robin Hood and you know some other players in the game stock debacle. Um, one of uh, the sentiments was uh, changing the trade date from T2. Uh, what impact would that actually have in the marketplace? I don't think it's going to have much of an impact, uh, frankly. Uh, you know, I think what's, what's going on here is that the retail investors are back because of technology. And that's a great thing, I think. Yeah. And through innovation, through Robin has that great information. They basically allow zero cost trading because they sell their order flow to people like Citadel. Yep. And, uh, and they can take, they can have a bigger say what's going on in the marketplace. The marketplace has been driven by the institutional players for many years now. So retail is getting into the game. I think it's a good thing for the market. And some of the institutional players like the hedge funds, they were, they had, they shorted uh, GameStop to 140%. And uh, they were having it there. way. now there's people pushing back on the other side and squeezing them. So that's a good, there's more players, well, either side of the trade in the marketplace, that's a good thing. Robin Hood took, took a lot of flack. They just didn't have enough capital to manage the, the settlement of, of these trades. And uh, that's important. So uh, they're trying to solve that problem. They took a lot of flack. I still think there's going to be more discussion around this. The SEC is going to look into this. Uh, you know, when a group of people in a chat room get together and start trying to drive prices, is that stock manipulation? Yeah. I'm not sure, but uh, it's they, they will look at this. And uh, I don't understand why GameStop didn't issue equity when the stock was $200. Companies like AMC and American Airlines did, but uh, uh, they, that would help alleviate the problem, the shortage of the stock. GameStop also, I don't think is worth $200. I think the fundamentally it's something less. And I think it, it'll come back down to earth again. It's close to, close to it's, it's better value right now, I'd say. Right. I agree. The, the one thing that concerns me is obviously uh, retail investors, maybe not very astute, um, you know, playing the options market, which obviously has a high, high degree of risk. For those who don't understand, yeah. obviously being a naked in, in, in an option trade. can be very risky. But I would say just generally trading costs are zero for a lot of retail investors right now. There's online education. Uh, there's good things going on for them. And I think uh, it's great for the overall market and for, for investors generally. Right. Cool. Right. It's oh, been a great conversation today, Wayne. And I hope you enjoy the Australian Open over the weekend. Uh, I know who you're rooting for. <laughs> Go Rafa. Okay. <laughs> and we thank you, our customers and our prospective customers for joining us. Uh, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to your portfolio manager. Um, we appreciate your business and we'll see you next week.